This is a two-part story about the unification of electricity and magnetism, and how it gives birth to the electrical age and the field of electromagnetism or electrodynamics. We tell the story of how the fathers of electrodynamics unravel the shroud of mysticisms around electricity and magnetism, and discovering their origin, and how these forces behave. Science has also entered a new era with the publication of the Principia Mathematica by Isaac Newton in 1687. Newton's laws of motion laid the foundation for classical mechanics, where the relationship between a physical object position and motion, and the forces acting upon it can now be described by precise equations for the first time. Newton also discovered the universal law of gravitation, which states that every particle attracts every other particle in the universe with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses, m1 and m2, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers, r. His laws of gravitations and motion allow him to explain the elliptical orbits of planets as described by Kepler, thus establishing modern quantitative science and astronomy. Science was thus set on the path to bring every observable within universal laws, the fewer the better, relying both on experimentation, mathematics, and logic. Our story, however, unfolds a century after Newton. But against this backdrop of Newtonianism school of thoughts and the Industrial Revolution, which occurred in Europe during the period from around 1760 to 1840, particularly in the Great Britain. Electricity and magnetism in its various forms were known since ancient cultures. First recorded description already appeared around 600 BC by Thales of Miletus, where he discovered that when amber was rubbed with a piece of animal fur, the amber would attract lightweight objects such as feathers. In a separate experiment, he noticed that lodestone, or magnetic iron ore, can attract pieces of iron. For centuries, study of electricity and magnetism are mostly limited to the phenomenological kind, and systematic experimental studies only began to appear in the 18th century with the advent and propagation of the Newtonian scientific methods. As Newton gravitational law works so well in describing planetary motion, early investigators of the 18th century were motivated to uncover a similar universal law for electrical force. In 1785, French physicist Charles Augustine de Coulomb did a series of definitive experiments with a torsion balance to study the repulsion and attraction forces of charged particles. He determined that the magnitude of the electric force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, now known as the Coulomb's law. Unlike the Newton's gravitational force, which is always attractive, the electrical force is attractive for opposite charges and repulsive for like charges. Apart from this difference, the close analogy between the two laws reflect a beautiful symmetry between the different fundamental forces of nature. However, a lingering question remains, is there an analogous law for magnetic forces? The answer to this question will have to await a key development in the field, that of a continuous electrical current flow. Before 1800, all man-made electricity were static. The discovery of a continuous flow of electricity came as a complete surprise. Luigi Galvani, a physician from Bologna, Italy, used to hang dead frogs' legs on brass hooks to dry. Around 1780, he touched one of the legs with a piece of iron that happened to be in contact with the brass hook. The frog's leg twitched. His friend, Alessandro Volta, who was a physicist and chemist, believed that electricity that stimulated the frog's leg was generated from the chemical reaction between the two metals in contact. This new understanding inspired Volta to build the first battery, known as the voltaic pile, about a decade later in 1799. The voltaic pile consists of alternating disc of silver and zinc, interleaved with electrolyte. It produces a continuous flow of electrical current when the zinc disc on one end is connected with the silver disc on the other end. The more disc in the pile, the stronger is the electrical effect. Voltaic also realized that there is no need for expensive silver, any pair of dissimilar metals would work. The discovery of a continuous flow of electricity represents a monumental step in science and enabled new experimental setup and discoveries that would otherwise be impossible. The field of chemistry became the first beneficiary of the invention of battery. Chemists began to dip the two electrical contacts of the voltaic pile in various chemical solutions and observed interesting chemical reactions. 
Sir Humphrey Davy and Michael Faraday were the prominent experimenters with this technique, which eventually gave birth to a new branch of physical chemistry called electrochemistry. Chemical compounds can be separated into their constituent parts, allowing for the discovery of new elements. Until 1820, electricity and magnetism were considered two separate forces. Except for anecdotal accounts of mariners who noticed that lightning strikes had the ability to disturb a compass needle, no systematic experiments were conducted. Just like how electricity changed chemistry and gave birth to electrochemistry, the intersection of electricity and magnetism has arrived. In 1820, a Danish physicist and chemist, Hans Christian Ørsted, discovered that a compass needle was deflected from magnetic north by a nearby electric current. The compass needle points in a circular manner in a direction described by the so-called right thumb rule. Ørsted experiment confirmed a direct relationship between electricity and magnetism. Electromagnetism, or electrodynamics, was born. Ørsted's findings send shockwaves through the scientific community. Nature's three known primary forces, gravity, electricity, and magnetism, either pull or push away from the sources. This new force, however, acted sideways. Scientists now knew that electricity and magnetism are inextricably linked, and the search for a fundamental theory for this linkage began with much fervor. By September 1820, French physicists Jean Biot and Félix Savard performed clever and painstaking experiments studying the distance dependence of the magnetic field generated by a long, straight current carrying wire, and reported their results to the French Academy of Science. Their experiments involved exquisite timing of damped oscillations of a magnetic needle using an accurate chronometer. Their measurement found that the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance to the current carrying wire and increases linearly with the magnitude of the current. This represent the first quantitative measurements of the Ørsted's effect. Then entered André Marie Ampere, a French physicist and mathematician, also in 1820. His first inclination was to investigate if two current carrying wires exert a force on each other. To his delight, the wires indeed attract when current flow in the same direction and repel when they flow in the opposite direction. Backed with careful experiments, Ampere proved that the force per unit length is proportional to the magnitude of the product of the two currents, and inversely proportional to their distance r. But why was the dependence not r square like in gravitation and electrical charges? A mystery that Ampere seeks to unravel. Seeing that current carrying wires exert a force on each other further reinforce Ampere's conjecture that current is the source of all magnetisms. But how would a bar magnet, with the magnetic field patterns as observed in iron filings, be produced by currents. He convinced himself mathematically that the metallic constituents that made up the magnet must be composed of many little current loops as shown on the right, whose magnetic field would add up to produce the magnetic field patterns one observed for a bar magnet. Ampere showed that the cumulated effect of many little current loops is mathematically equivalent to that produced by a surface current around the cylinder. Ampere realized that his idea can be easily tested by winding a wire up in helical manner around a cylinder thus building the world first solenoid. The solenoid, when current is passed and suspended, points to the Earth's north like a compass. This demonstration was very satisfying to Ampere, and further solidify the notion that elemental current loops are building blocks of magnets. The pressing question then is how to explain his newly discovered forces between current varying wire in Newtonian terms. As electrical current can be treated mathematically as a string of infinitesimal current elements, each with its strength and directions. He showed mathematically that the forces between these parallel current elements indeed exert a force that goes inversely with the square of their distance. It all looks so right now. The forces between elemental current is now analogous to that of electrical and gravitational forces, all proportional to the inverse of their distance square. Today, we understand the ubiquitous nature of the inverse square law because of a point source which radiates outwards in a 3D space. Nevertheless, we now have the building blocks for the theory of electricity and magnetism from elemental charges and current. As James Clark Maxwell later puts it, the whole theory and experiment seems as if it had leapt, full grown and full armed, from the brain of the Newton of electricity. It is perfect in form and unassailable in accuracy and it is summed up in a formula from which all the phenomena may be deduced, 
and which must always remain the cardinal formula of electrodynamics. Electrodynamics theory, in its rudimentary form, was born. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.